We're excited to be back with a no filter segment as Mr. Brown's going to throw down with a Mets fan. Plus, we got to talk about the Tiger Woods situation. The NFL's going crazy with some quarterbacks with Russ and Mr. Deshaun Watson still sits down there in Houston. And the NBA All Star game. Who got snubbed and who's in? This is the We Don't Know Sports Podcast. Stay tuned. Welcome, welcome, welcome back once again to the We Don't Know Sports Podcast. This is Chad the Mark with my fellas, Mr. Brown and Canadian Biggie. And we are glad you gave us the opportunity to encroach on your eardrums and try to uh, spread some sports knowledge or lack thereof here with you. And if you like the show, that's great. Tell your friends about it. You know, let them know about it. You can subscribe anywhere you listen to podcasts. And if you don't, just move on with your life and, and we'll pretend like we never met each other. But we got an exciting show here. We got a, a Mets fan who's got his own podcast and he talks about some, some, uh, I guess scouting and, and different things like that. I don't know. We're going to talk to him, but Mr. Brown is a Braves fan. You're ready to throw down with a Mets fan. I'm assuming. I've been a Braves fan longer than he's been alive. <laughs> so that that is uh, the gauntlet initially being turned down. So our no-filter segment's coming up soon. We're going to talk a little bit about NFL quarterbacks because the Russ situation in Seattle, Deshaun Watson. You know, the NFL offseason just started, but I feel like we can't quit talking about the NFL. And we're going to do our fans a, a, a favor here and actually talk NBA a little bit. It's really just about the All-Star game that nobody really cares about. But, you know, we're going to give them a little, little taste because it's been hard for us to get on the NBA. And we would be watching – the Mountaineers play tonight, but once again, the Big 12 keeps letting Baylor not play games, so we don't have that going on. And then the last but not least, we got pop culture, you know. So Mr. Brown recommended a movie that I kind of haphazardly watched and didn't get all the way through. So, uh, Biggie, you were about in the same boat, right? Yeah, I liked it. It was a lot different. What I saw was a lot different than what I was expecting going in. That and then Tiger Woods. We got to talk about Tiger Woods. Absolutely. So, so that's where we're at, fellas. Hope you enjoy the show. This is the We Don't Know Sports Podcast. All right. I know we have talked enough NFL over the past like month or two to, to just make everyone kind of drool out of their mouth here a little bit, but I can't help it, man. This, this Russ Wilson situation up in Seattle and the Deshaun Watson thing is still at the precipice of everything going on. We're, we're still months away from the NFL draft, but. What What is going on here? So apparently teams are now taking calls or, or Seattle's taking calls from teams on, on Russ, right? Yeah, I think it's really weird. It was almost like Seattle was mad that he went public with the Dan Patrick. Just because he said interview. he wanted to have some input, right? Yep. And now it's kind of turned into, you want to test us? Okay, we'll see where we can send you. Uh, what it is, Seattle isn't shopping him, but they're answering the phone when people call. Right. Russ doubled down today and said that, he just gave the list of teams he would like to be traded to, but he doubled down and also said that I would like to stay in Seattle, whatever that means. But he just said, in case you're trading me, here's where I'd like to go. So before I get into like some details here, do you think Russ finishes his career in Seattle? Because I do not. If it's already going on like this, I can't say how it does. I think it's untenable going forward. There's too much tension there. And then what'd you hear in like, 2013, 2014, when they were in the Super Bowl, won 2015. A lot of the players on the defensive side of the ball that got them to that part, they didn't like him. There was a bad vibe in the locker room. Yeah. And I think some of that has, has continued to carry on, even though they've had a change of, you know, players, but he's not that far in. I mean, how many years has he been in the league? Nine. Yeah. Has he been in that long? Yeah. Holy crap. I mean, think about it. It's been a while since he's been to the Super Bowl and he's been to two of them. Wow. So, like, they're in marriage counseling, essentially, right now. So, <laughs> we know how that ends. It don't usually end well. No. So, the the thing is, like, Russ is watching the Super Bowl this year, and he sees, like, Tom Brady with his offensive line protecting him oh so gloriously, and then Patrick Mahomes running around like his life depends on it. And Russ is like, I, that's what I feel like every day, yeah. and I don't want that anymore. But So, the, the thing I saw, or at least read today, was that Seattle wants three first-round picks. Ooh, like that's that, the starting point. Right. Which, and that may or may not be a hefty price tag. Ever, teams could be like the Rams now where they don't even care about draft picks and yep. just sign that. And then like, who knows if those even hit or not? Because well, you could get like two thing. guys that are a bust and one that's good and it's still not as good as Russ, right? We're going to trade you three first round picks. One of them is going to be number five pick in the draft. There's going to be a guy coming out of college who you absolutely love to, uh, talk about that with the who after <laughs> one year in the NFL, they want to trade him somewhere Tebow else. 2.0, baby. Yeah, like you, there's no guarantee with draft draft picks if i was the seahawks i would 
fire Pete Carroll, everyone in the front <laughs> office before I would trade Russell Wilson. Absolutely. So, I and, agree with and, and here's what I don't understand. What's more difficult, trading him because of what's going on or just going, okay, Russ, we'll listen to you. You just want us to sign a left tackle? Okay, we'll go sign a left tackle. Like, why is that so hard? Like, that's all they got to do. All he wants is some help. Like, I don't understand how – see. I feel like Seattle is mismanaging this. I feel like Russ put out the little bit of noise there, and it was just really mild, and now it's just turned into this freaking avalanche. Yeah, because from the their side of it, they should have been better on the PR side of it. Yeah, we hear you, Russ. We know that we've tried to do a couple things that haven't worked out. Looking forward to build a great future with you and getting back to the Super Bowl. We're going to put all the guys around you we can. We feel your pain. We love you. We're in this together. They went the, like – Complete 180. All right. So, so switching gears down to Houston. So Deshaun Watson, that situation, like Houston has no intention on trading him. They say, right? Nick Casario has repeatedly said, I have no interest in trading the player. So I, I get that they say that, but then when the offers come in, but maybe I guess they're not answering the phone. It, it don't even matter because Watson doubled down again today. He did and said, Collie, I think's the new head coach. He said, listen, I'm telling you again, I'm not going to play for Houston. So, so you have this, to make a trade. <laughs> does this become uh, Carson Palmer 2.0? He just doesn't show up and ends up getting traded. I, I guess. Six, seven or I guess. Whatever trade deadline is. If they were smart, they'd just go and trade the guy. I, I mean, who who gets moved first? I mean, it's got to be Deshaun, right? But it's Houston, be Deshaun. but Seattle, we with a, with a more established Super Bowl winning quarterback is at least open to taking calls, and Houston continues to just foul up everything. Hey, you, you didn't even mention who the teams were for uh, Russ, and I'm going to tell you as a Raiders I fan. I knew you would. I'm going to tell you as a Raiders fan, bring that man to Sin City, baby. God, like, how good would the Raiders be if they just had every – I mean, mm. that, that's amazing. I'm getting giddy inside. Not that Carr is a bad Someone's quarterback, excited. but with yeah. the talent that's around there, if they could stay healthy because they do have a few nice young players, if you were to put Russ there, oh, my God, you're over the top. We still don't have a defense, so that's a problem. That's that's all right. Neither does Seattle right now. That's true. There you <laughs> yeah. go. I, I just I just think it's it's comical to watch this in Seattle, who has kind of been you know organization wise pretty solid. Like they've moved on when they've had to. They're still competitive. Like Deshaun Watson and the Texans didn't make the playoffs. Barely won what five ga- six games last year. Did they but even win that? Been good the last few years. They've been to the playoffs like three times in five years. It wasn't like. It's been bad the entire time he's been there. And I'll say one thing about Deshaun Watson. He didn't have to sign that extension. He signed it after D-Hop was on his way out of town. Yeah, but they told him they he would be a part of personnel decisions. Yeah. That clearly was not the case. That was not actually written into the contract. That was more like a gentleman's agreement. And let's be honest, there's no gentleman running the Houston Texans he, he's right no now. He's no Taysom Hill. He doesn't guarantee <laughs> anything. Hey, right, Taysom Hill might be the highest paid tight end in NFL history if you True. look at it that way. But uh, Just don't check for him in Yahoo <laughs> Fantasy Sports. No. <laughs> so you can draft him in the second round if you yeah. want. Yeah. I'll but, say that. Yes, I think that <laughs> what the Texans will end up doing is making a deal with Miami to recoup the draft picks that they already sent to Miami. <laughs> they could have two firsts this year, a first next year, and start your rebuild there. But is Tua even a bargaining chip in a trade scenario here? I feel like he's not. It depends who values him. I don't think anybody does. And so they send Tua. Maybe you don't want to. You have to take Tua in the deal. If you can get two first-round picks – couple thirds Watson's off the books new staff new front office you're starting to rebuild where are you going to get a better deal well uh, uh, go ahead Mr. No, Brown. I was, this is kind of off subject and it's not off subject but to me it's kind of funny because uh Jalen Hurts gets benched for two in college and now we've come full circle <laughs> where two uh two is pretty much viewed as a guy who's not going to lead a franchise right and they traded went just so Hurts can get the first team reps in Philly so the verdict's still out with Hurts. It is. And two is just – he's already just – He's already car. written off. And, and the, and How the funny, does that happen? The funny thing is, like, you got Golf and Wentz, who both got drafted the same year. They're all on different teams now. Deshaun Watson, who hasn't really won anything yet – 
he's in the same situation. Like he, he hasn't been to the Super Bowl like the other two have, oh. and, and they're wanting to ship him off. And then you got Russ up there, who's the grizzled veteran that you know what you're getting, but he is nine years in. So how much of an upside is there still there? And then the last thing I want to throw into the whole quarterback roulette situation here is Dak Prescott. And I'll tell you why, because he's technically a free agent and the Cowboys have the opportunity to franchise tag him. It wouldn't have If they franchise tag him this year, I think it's 37, 38 million, maybe 40 million. It's, uh, the average of the highest paid for the last five years so with the new deals. I'm going to say, yeah, high 30. So, so here, here's what I read though. If they franchise tag him this year and then they franchise tag him next year, you know what the salary is next year? What's that? 52 million for one year. Think, yeah. I don't because. Think they- when you franchise him multiple times in a row, think back to Kirk Cousins when he started getting all that chatter from Washington. It was the same thing. So if you're Dallas, like, don't you just move on now? Like, if, if you're not going to work out a long-term contract, you just need to walk away. Yeah. Like, I mean, are you really going – and if you're if you're Dak, like, you got to be okay. Like, go ahead and pay me $35 million this year and then let me be a free agent at 27 or 28 years old, however old he is. It's I like crazy. the Dak – and Jerry, Jerry's not going to sign him. Jerry likes exactly where it's at because he didn't pay him last year. Now he can have him for another year and see if he proves himself. With Russ throwing it out there, oh, the Cowboys are one of the teams I want to go to if you trade me. Man, there's a lot of uh, All right, but not to, not to cut you off, but here's the thing. Even if Dak proves himself, like you're not signing an extension because all they can do – because if you don't sign an extension, then you're a free agent. You just proved yourself, so the market value is going to be really good for you. Yep. And if they franchise tag you, $52 million for one year, and then you still can be a free agent the next year. Like they- he, he's got control over this now. So what are they doing? The Red Rider BB gun? I, <laughs> they might. They, might. I don't, they haven't said anything yet. They have up until – when, when is March 31st when they have to franchise tag? Well, the – exclusive franchise tag window is now open and it goes until like the second week of March. All right. So they got time to, to try to figure this out. But anyway, so you look at these three pieces and these are all three legitimate, really good quarterbacks. I'm interested to see what happens. Yeah. So I think Seattle stays put because they're not that stupid. They can't be that stupid. Like how hard is it just to go sign a freaking offensive lineman? I think, Houston will come around. They're trying to play the long game. It's not going to work, but it's probably not going to be till summer till they figure that out. And I think Dak Prescott gets franchise tagged. Am I wrong with any of that? Uh, I think Jerry works a deal out with old Pete Carroll where he signs Dak and then he trades him up to Seattle and brings uh, Ross down. <laughs> I like how you think. We'll see what happens. Anyway, stay tuned for more NFL quarterback carousel. <laughs> The biggest news story of the week, though, has to be Tiger Woods. And we've been down this road before. We've had some interesting news with Tiger Woods and vehicular accidents before, but this one seems a little different. Happened out like 7, 10, 7, 15 in the morning Pacific Coast time, uh, you know, on Tuesday. And we, we just do a once a week show, so we're, we might be a little late to the game, but. Like, this is huge because Tiger Woods had the vehicle accident, rolled off the, hit the median, rolled off the road, rolled a couple times, had to get removed with the jaws of life, went into surgery, all kinds of lower leg trauma issues and everything. What, what are your thoughts as you saw this happen? I was at work all day and you guys started texting back and forth about it. Like, what does this mean for Tiger? What's happening? How are people looking at it? Just tell me, tell me how you're kind of encapsulating all this. Well, when I first saw it, I was wondering the same thing. Was the other under the influence that happened so early in the morning? By the time you see it, was it from the night before? What I had heard is he was on his way, even though he's recovering from back surgery, to play around a golf golf with like Drew Brees and somebody else. I think he's kind of like giving him tips and stuff. Yeah, that's a great golf coach, by the way. Um, then, like you were saying earlier, that road is notorious for having wrecks on it. Right. They did toxicology on him? He was clean. Uh, they did the check the computer. It doesn't appear as though he tried to break before he went over to median. When I saw that vehicle roll, that's like something you see in a movie. It went 700 feet. Like how the engine wasn't even attached anymore. How do you live through that? He wore a seatbelt. <laughs> that's what I can say. Seatbelt and air. Maybe belt. that's a good advertisement for the Genesis SUV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I. Ah. So I'm not the biggest golf fan, and I'll be self-admitting of that. Sure. But Tiger Woods, all right, when he won that last tournament, it was like a rock concert. Yes. When he came back and, like, 
Golf is so much better with Tiger Woods. In Always it. has been. And it, it, we know he's not the same Tiger that he was, what, 10, 15 years yeah, he's ago. He's just physically different now. But, like, Tiger is the man. And he, has he made some bad decisions in his life? Absolutely. Because he's human. He's not He's not a robot. He's human. He's given to some life's temptations. He's made bad decisions along the way. But don't kick the man while he's down because guess what? He has made golf what it is today. So, so don't – like I think we need to, you know, hope for the best for Tiger. Both of his legs are broke. And let's hope he makes a recovery. I don't know if he will, but I would love to see Tiger back on the PGA Tour before it's all said and done, even if it's a couple of years down the road. So, so – a hundred percent agree with everything you just said. And the thing that pisses me off more than anything, and Biggie, you even kind of did this just a second ago. Everyone jumped to conclusions on this. Like they're like, was he drunk? Was he on anything? Well, you get that when you've been down. That I get road the before. reputation, but like, has he not come back and redeemed himself enough from that? But I, I, that's fine if, if that's what comes out. But I was so I mean, sick. That's of, human nature though. When it's a single, my car God, accident, I was you know like, I mean? every single media outlet though was just going on and on. Like they wanted to bury the guy before he was even up for air. Like, I don't understand why that's where we have to go. Whatever happened to just waiting for facts to come out? Why do we always have to speculate on everything? Have you we, been living under a rock? I wish I like was because years? I know the answer is because people just want to talk about the crap because scandal sells. It always does. And, and I'm glad. I'm so glad that there wasn't anything in the toxicology report. I'm so glad that he wasn't drinking. I'm a little pissed off that TMZ ran the report and they're like, well, he left the hotel kind of angrily. Like, I don't care you know yep. what i mean like just let, but that's tmz national choir it, it's what they, they do clicks. it's what they do i that's get probably because the hotel breakfast was cold and he was pissed ah, off. continental I mean, breakfast my I ass mean. that's ah. but if there's where's the biscuits and gravy <laughs> if there's anybody that can come back from this though it's tiger woods but outside of the the restructured legs he's gonna have you know he's gonna be lieutenant dan metal legs and all that now maybe but the, but he the, had a completely smashed ankle, right? Too. But it, on top of that, like, how's his back even doing? You know, he just came off the back surgery, and you have this accident on top of it. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he never plays a round of golf again. But if he does, it would be the greatest thing. And, and there's nothing like seeing Tiger Woods on a Sunday wearing the red shirt and, and the blood in the water. And this, if he makes it back, and like, and I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not even a golf guy. I'm getting chills talking about. Like, it. if he was playing in a tournament, if, you'd if watch he, it. If he makes it back in two or three years whatever the case may be everyone's tuning yeah in. you're no, watching not, it and you're not golfing i'm watching it right so like, like it's crazy i hope he makes it back in the 90s for me king, king griffey jr had that backwards hat that swag he made baseball cool tiger, tiger made golf did cool. that with golf he made every kid in america want to play golf fist pumping stomping down the uh, fairway <laughs> on the 18. It's just the crowd's loudest that they've ever been. You hear him like you do in the movies from, you know, three holes over when he drains a putt. He just – he plays like a robot. He's amazing. And, and, and he's evolved so much as an individual. And I know a lot of people have probably seen the HBO documentary by now. And, and Tiger, early in his career, I was reading this quote. I can't remember who it was by. It might have been Paul Azinger. I can't, can't remember. But when Tiger was young in his career – it was he wasn't comfortable unless people were uncomfortable around him because he wanted to cause them so much stress because you knew how good he was yeah. that just the sheer fact that he's playing golf with you in the same tournament, you're like, holy crap, this guy's – he's a maniac. I got to stay away from him. He's intimidating. And now it's – He's not comfortable unless you're comfortable around him. He has become an ambassador for golf where before he was just kind of on the pedestal. Yep. Now he's become one of the guys. And for the guy to have that skill set to be that guy and then this to happen, like it's kind of heartbreaking because these guys that were coming up in the game – when he was at the pinnacle, now they're playing with him. And if you looked at the social media reaction, the reverence people have for this guy, like it's unbelievable. And, and talk about the controversy and what he's gone through for him to put all that behind him. And then this happened. It, it's kind of heartbreaking. Well, there's two things for me. One, I'd like to see everybody on Sunday wear red in honor of Tiger this weekend. I saw that recommended. So let's see if it happens. I hope it does. I put it on our page. And the other thing, like you were saying before, why does everybody have to go there? Tear him up, build him down. Charles Barkley, who we all love, throws guys out bar windows. He's done his whole career. I'm not a role model, right? So when he does something or says something dumb, people are like, ah, oh, that's Chuck being Chuck. Tiger's endorsements built him up with this smile to be, you know, better than anyone else, most innocent human being in the world. Well, 
if he had just been himself the entire time, his fall from grace isn't as much, and he's he feels better. He's more natural. You know what I mean? I, I guess I'm just the guy that says he had an affair with his wife and bad things happened, and, and he might have had some pain addiction, uh, you know, because of all the surgeries he's had. But is it really that bad? Did he do oh. anything that bad? He didn't. So, But social media is ruthless, right? Absolutely. You saw the guy's car. He's lucky to be alive. He's, yes. But regardless of that, people think it's cool to get clicks and we're going to make these memes. Uh, just, just tasteless memes. Within hours of the man, not knowing if he's going to live. They, we don't know the details yet. A little over a year ago, we lost Kobe Bryant in a helicopter accident. Yeah, I mean, the timing's crazy. One of the best basketball players ever. Kobe's not coming back. No. Well, and you look at Tiger's car. Tiger dodged a bullet. He's going to be back. He's living. We don't know if he's going to ever play golf again. But at least he's here. He's still here. So my point is, we we dodged a bullet here. We didn't lose an icon. He's made some mistakes. That's it is what it is. He's human. But like, let's let's hope for the best and hope he makes a a comeback here in a PGA Tour and and like because it's everyone's better for it. So quit kicking the man while he's down. Appreciate what you got. Quit trying to get your clicks. Quit being an asshole. And let's all just pray for Tiger. God, I can't say any more than that. That was eloquently put, Mr. Brown. Thank you. The guy that's not a golf fan just defended Tiger Woods better than anybody I've talked to all week. Don't forget to find us on social media, guys. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter, kind of. It is what it is. YouTube, even. We don't know sports. Find us anywhere you're on social media. What is up? We don't know Sports Nation. Now is the time that we ask fans all across the world to take off the filter, rip off the Band-Aid, and tell everyone exactly what is on their mind. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for No Filter. All right, everybody, as you heard from the intro, we're back with our No Filter segment, and we have none other than goes by the hawk and he's representing his weekly streamer dynasty baseball podcast you can find anywhere you listen to podcasts he's covering all kinds of stuff when it comes to minor league prospects and things like that but above everything else he is a mets fan and you know mr brown he is our resident Braves fan so this ought to be interested but or interesting i can't talk i'm stumbling over myself already but either way we're glad to have him on the show welcome to the show hawk how you doing brother man what's going on guys you guys are rocking and rolling there. I'm loving the pictures in the background here. Ah, uh, you see the man cave. You know, there's a lot of uh, sweat equity that went into this. We don't know sports studios, baby. That's how we do it. Love it, man. <laughs> Love it. Let's uh, go. So, man, we're so glad you decided to come on the show. And, and you know, we're going to get into some of the stuff about your podcast because I got some questions definitely when it comes to the farm systems and prospects and things like that. But how are you a Mets fan, man? Like, what what made you? decide to join them and not the evil empire well man whenever i was born i just wanted to be sad for the rest of my life so i just decided <laughs> to go ahead and hop on the sad bandwagon uh no <laughs> um no i'm originally from new jersey uh grew up a mets fan uh family still lives up there try to go to as many games as possible um uh, i guess as any mets fan can you try to have an optimistic view in life so that's what I'm trying to do is stay positive and find the positives that are in here. 2021 should be pretty darn good, though. I, I mean, I like the optimism, and the Mets have gone out of their way to try to make some moves here. So let's just get right to it. How are you feeling about the upcoming season? What are your prognostication for your lovely Mets here? Oh, man. I mean, whenever you end up having Steve Cohen come in and get rid of those Will Ponds, I, that was a Christmas gift that just was wonderful. That was long overdue. Glad that it happened. Uh, the moves that that him and Sandy Alderson has been able to make has just been absolutely fantastic, and you can see it on the field. I mean, they've been able to get you know key uh, free agents this off season in Jonathan VR. You've been able to get Tywin Walker. You know James McCann. Uh, you can't beat it, man. I, you didn't even mention uh, the trades being made here and uh, bringing Lindor in. Yeah, bringing Lindor in and Carlos Carrasco, man, I, you can't you can't beat it. And yeah, giving up Ahmad Rosario and Andres Jimenez along with 
you know, Wolf and Isaiah Green. It stings a little bit, but you're getting such a high quality shortstop option that you just can't turn that down, man. And, you know, I tried to go back and think about, you know, in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years or so, you know, thinking about shortstop options that have been with the Mets, it's been an Achilles heel since we had Jose Reyes. <laughs> That's I, absolutely true. So, Mr. Brown, how do you feel about the Mets this year? I mean, I like all the moves they've did. I mean, it's good enough for second place in the East. I mean, that's <laughs> I, I, I appreciate their effort, you know. It is what it is. All right, so Mr. Brown's well, already throwing shade here. So what are your prognostications on the upcoming season? How exactly do you think the Mets are going to do? I mean, I think that the Mets are going to be pushing for a wild card spot. If not a wild card spot, I think they're taking the division. Because your Braves, although they are very good on paper, very young in a lot of different ways, they wanted to go with the uh, geriatric patient in uh, Charlie Morton this year. <laughs> and hopefully he has some uh, fuel still left in the tank. I, I tend to doubt it. So we'll see how that plays out. It worked so well with Cole Hamels last year. Um, you know, Mike Soroka with his uh, like his that. new um, Achilles tendon. That's wonderful. No, I'm yeah. kidding. I, I don't want to bash on the Braves. Anyway, no, it's okay. Um, you can. It's fine. Hey, so so listen, so listen, so listen. Charlie Morton, yeah, I got you. He's our number four starter. So <laughs> get the hell out of here. <laughs> In Anderson, 092 ERA, and he's still he's still on the top 100 rookie. List in all of baseball, and he's number 18 okay. overall. He didn't even qualify, but he showed you what his changeup's made of. And he's our number three starter, and Morton might be four. So guess what? We got Uzuna back. Guys, I'm sorry. It's just you're playing for second place, and I think you'll get a wild card, but it is what it is. Don't get me fired hey, up. Hey, man. The Hawk? There we go. Is that your name? If you want to, if you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him disrespect so, man, you like that, Hawk. Don't let him do it. Hey. Hey, man, he, he can try all he wants, man. Whenever you look at those walk rates of Ian Anderson in the minor leagues, you just wait until they pop back up in the majors. But Ooh. he got lucky last year, and he's going to come back down to earth. When you're looking right. at uh, Max Freed over there, the strikeout rates are not that great. So whenever you're looking at a guy that barely gets a strikeout rate or strikeout an inning in the total season, you better hope and hope and hope that that continues and carries over for this year. So we'll see how that works with your rotation. And obviously, you know, Mike Soroka, I'm glad that he's back. He's healthy, at least. That's going to be good. Um, so it, it's interesting, man. It's interesting. Obviously, with the Mets, you always got to deal with the injuries, but they've already made big strides in their uh, health department, too. So the Will Ponds <laughs> just took them all with them. Hey, l- let me jump in. So yeah, I would say this whether you're on the show or not. Jacob deGrom is my favorite pitcher in all of baseball in either league, and it's not close. So There we go. You got DeGrom, and you got everybody else. Don't give me the Verlanders before we got hurt, Scherzer, uh, Garrett Cole for all that money. You give me DeGrom, and he's the best guy in baseball. Hey, he, he's a badass. B- before you give me your, your rebuttal, your acceptance of praise from Braves no, Nation he, he, here. He's a badass. You know, I, I agree. And one of the things we were talking about before we started the show was I was telling Mr. Brown that DeGrom showed up for uh, spring training and was already throwing 99 and like warmups and whatnot. And I know his velocity has gotten better each of the past, like two or three years, but do you have any concern that the guy's showing up on day one of spring training and already throwing 99? No, not at all. Uh, I remember, I remember watching Jacob DeGrom in 2015, whenever, uh, or 2014, actually, whenever he came up the uh, game against the Yankees, watching him just absolutely dominate. As soon as I saw him pitching, man, I knew that this guy had some top-of-the-order type of stuff. And just like you said, every year over the last several years, his velocity That's just crazy. continues to tick up and tick up. We're talking about a guy who's now you know, just into his 30s, and unfortunately he started late. There's conversations left and right that could say that he could end up making the Hall of Fame. I think he could if he gets a couple more Cy Youngs. And, you know, with Bauer taking his uh, rumored uh, performance uh, supplements, we're not going to say <laughs> drugs, we're going to say supplements, um, there was one start last year that really got DeGrom out of that Cy Young race. Let's just be honest with it. I mean, it is what it is. And I agree with you 100%. I, I think, honestly, he is if not the best pitcher in the league, 
number two easily. There's no way better. A lot of people are a lot of people are making cases for Bieber. I like Bieber a lot, but I do think Degrom's better. And Cole, come on, I mean, he's just. I don't know. I, I, mean, I don't like him as a Yankee. They're they're all good pitchers, but I think Degrom, similarly as you as you kind of put, like he, he kind of puts fear into your eyes a little bit when you're the opponent. Like Degrom is just he's got the nasty stuff, and the fact he seems like he's getting better and he's just now reaching these prime. That's crazy. As a Braves fan, watching them play 19 times a year, uh, of course not last year, but I know if Degrom's lined up on the opposite side. Our best case scenario is we're winning two to one if that happens. <laughs> like you know, it's going to be low scoring. Yeah. You're, you hope to catch the one mistake he's going to throw that game, and just that is what it is. So he's a badass, like I said. But other than that, I like our chances. You can't play him. You can't pitch him every game, and uh, that's where your downfall will be. All right. So real quick, <laughs> let me let me let me ask you: What are your prediction on the record this year? How are the Mets going to finish? Give me a, give me a, a total. You know. I think I think between the Mets and the Braves, they're going to push really, really hard in the division. I think that the Mets are going to probably end up getting 95 wins. Wow. And they could probably push wow. to 100. Mm. I really think that they could. Wow, they're a very, very strong team. We got to talk out around. optimist bullpen. Everything. <laughs> I yeah. love your eternal I'll, optimism. I'll, I'll die on that hill. <laughs> Yeah. I, it, it's not out of the the realm of reason. They definitely could, especially with the additions they made. I, I'm more of like an 85 to 90 uh, guy looking at him. I, I think the Mets could do 90 to 92. Okay. And I think the Braves are going to be 95 to 98. I mean, it's going to be close, but, I mean, they're both going to be really two I, I solid teams. That. I mean, they're going to be better than the yeah. Phillies and the Nats, right? Oh, uh, don't so, forget the hey, fish. L- let me tell you this, though. So, we, we can all agree to this. The NL East is the most competitive division in sports for, uh, for baseball this year because – I'm thinking that even though the Marlins made the playoffs, it's a short season. I'm thinking that between the Marlins and the Phillies, they're going to be battling for last place. Yep. Uh, well, I think that that's a possibility. I think, honestly, I think the Marlins and the Nationals, okay. which I know you guys usually ask who is the number one team that you hate in the division. Okay. It's not the Braves. Wow. Oh. Uh, it is the Nationals. Okay. It is the Nationals. Why, why the Nationals? And, why so much hate there? So <laughs> this stems back to after the 2015 season with Daniel Murphy hitting, I believe it was four, five, seven, seven home runs, I think, in the, uh, mm-hmm. the postseason there, all back to back to back. He goes and breaks the hearts of all Mets fans and goes to the Nationals. Not that. only does he go to the Nationals, he almost wins MVP with the Nationals as a second baseman. <laughs> On top of that, man, the Mets have always just had issues with the Nationals, you know, and, and you being a Braves fan, I know that you've seen them upset a lot of different things, obviously win the World Series here just recently. My wife is actually uh, a Phillies fan, grew up, uh, went to school in Philadelphia, was there during their World Series teams. Sounds like marriage. So counseling. her and I go back and forth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we go back and forth on it. But uh, yeah, the Nationals down, down with the Nationals. Bring back the Expos. <laughs> hey, he's applauding for that, so I'm going to vouch for Mr. Brown and let you know that he wears an Expos hat to work almost every day. No, every other day. Man. Every other day. That's still a lot. Yeah. I, that's just showing the love. I can't that's hate him now year. because there, there's no team Yeah, they there. can't. they can't hurt you. I just like the collars, man. I sound like my wife now. <laughs> it matches my <laughs> outfit. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. All right, so so I appreciate all the talk on the Mets. So real quick, let's swing over to your podcast. So you've been doing a lot of coverage here over the uh, the farm systems, the prospects, and things like that. So just um, kind of in general, can you tell us like what teams right now have the best prospect system? Who has the best farm system? I'm a Reds fan. My my farm system sucks, so I don't need you to talk about that. I appreciate the pat on the back, Mister Brown. But tell me, tell me, kind of like if you had to tell our listeners here over the next three to five years who might make a rise because of the farm system, who would it be? Now, listen, I'm not going to break your heart. Your your farm system is a little rough, but it's <laughs> but it's on the men, and you would actually get along with uh, one of my cohorts, uh, Hunter Rakes, aka the uh, Kentucky Wildcat. Uh, he's a big Cincinnati Reds fan as well. Uh, to answer your question, I think, um, you know, I think that the Cleveland Indians has the best farm system 
in all of Major League Baseball right now. Whenever you're looking at, you know, just the, the amount of talent, the writers that we have over here at the Weekly Streamer, um, one of which is Ed Fingerhut. He did the write up on. Yeah, him, we know Ed. on the. Uh, yeah, you know Ed very well. So Ed Fingerhut did the write up on the Cleveland Indian system. And man, even after that trade for Lindor, we're talking about good prospects that went back there. Didn't even crack his top 10. Wow. The system is just so loaded. And what we do over here is we do um, a 1 through 30 ranking. We do a write-up on 1 through 10, and then we go and do a podcast as well. So we try to give you guys the lowdown of what's going on with the prospects um, and be able to give you a heads-up there. But definitely, for me, it's the Cleveland Indians. Mm. I, I, so makes I, sense. I have one question for you because we got a our uh, partner with the show, Canadian Biggie. <laughs> I was going to ask the same thing. He's, hey. si- he's sitting back there across the pool table here, <laughs> but uh, he's a huge Mariners fan, and everything I've saw that the Mariners are in the top three. So, what can you speak yep. to about the Mariners? Yeah, give him some optimism here because he needs it. It's been quite a while. Oh, he's he's got a lot to look forward to, man. Whenever you're talking about uh, the Mets. Uh, first overall draft pick, Mr. Jared uh, Kalenic. Yeah. He gets traded over there for, uh, you know, old pieces and parts and Edwin <laughs> Diaz, you know, whatever. Um, He's a man. Anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and and actually today, speaking of which, today I just dropped my, uh, my top 500 dynasty rankings and prospect rankings as well. Jared Kalenic and Julio Rodriguez came in at number one and number two over Wander Franca. So – for him, as a Mariners fan, he's got to be happy with that. Kelnick is absolutely amazing. Whenever you're talking about a power, speed, blend, this guy's going to be an absolute stud. And Julio, the power is for days. And now that the handmade bone is a lot better, he'll be able to come back and hopefully maybe even make a spot at the major league level this year. Beyond that, man, they've got amazing pitchers. Down in my neck of the woods, uh, George Kirby came from Elon University. Elon. He's going to be up there. I think. Yeah, I think that he's going to end up being a solid SP2. Logan Gilbert, same type of deal. I think that he is very, very strong. And, of course, the first-round draft pick from this last year with Emerson Hancock coming out of the uh, University of Georgia, man. He was, he was being talked about as number one overall with with uh, Spencer Torkelson. So, you know, whenever you got that kind of talent going into that system, it goes a lot deeper than that, man. But arguably, I'd say they're number two, number three in all of Major League Baseball. Got to be pumped. God, this guy knows his shit, doesn't he? Prospect uh, <laughs> guru here. <laughs> Biggie, there there's optimism go. for the Mariners. I know he doesn't have his headphones on, but we're letting him know that the Hawk is saying that the Mariners might actually be decent here in the next coming Let's years. Let's do it. <laughs> So, I don't know. That's all I got for him. You got anything you want to add? All right. So, I have one last question for you. I would like you to tell us who is going to be your division winners in each division right now. Yeah, just go through it. And if you want to even elaborate and give us no, World Series, that's I, I don't. Even, I don't even want wild cards. I want who's taking each division. All right. So, we need six teams. All right. So, each division. Let's take a look here. I think that in the AL East, I know that you guys were talking to a Boston Red Sox fan last episode. Toronto's going to take it, Ooh, not the Yankees. I like it. Toronto's going to take it. The NL East, it's going to be – I think it's going to be the Braves. I think it's going to be the Braves in the <laughs> NL East. Um, let's see. You were AL uncomfortable West. with that last year. Uh, I'm good now. <laughs> <laughs> AL West, I'm going to go with – Oakland. Ooh. I think Oakland still yeah. finds a They're way to, always to pull that off. They're always there. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Hey, let me chime in for that, though. Like, I picked the Astros by default, but the, I feel like Oakland's got the better pitching, and they always hang around. So if, if Oakland won a division, it wouldn't surprise me. And Houston, if they win it, they're, I, mean, I feel like it's very close division right there. I'm worried that uh, Bregman can't hit anymore. Now well, that he's not getting, you know, zapped every time or Altuve. <laughs> you if you go back and listen to my houston episode you'll hear me banging the trash can and doing my best Bregman <laughs> impersonation well when they play the rangers it may not matter dude Altuve batted under 200 last year i know yeah i picked him in like the third round he killed me in fantasy yeah, yeah. i still won Bruh. in spite of him yeah. all right sorry go ahead yeah and now arguably the biggest upset i think that you're going to find in the nl west okay because obviously everybody's 
already cashing no. cashing the ticket for the Padres. Dodgers are going to win. It. Oh no, no, okay. We, we thought we, agree. we thought you were going to take the yeah. Padres yeah, there. It's we're, the Dodgers, the Dodgers yeah. clearly yeah, are the no. team. All right, I agree. Yep, no, the Pod the Padres aren't going to do it. Um, and the NL Central, you're going to have the Cardinals. They're just going to continue to do what they do. They yeah. pretty much already cashed their ticket. That, that's a weak division. And yeah, yeah, agreed. AL Central. Let's see. It's a toss up for me between the White Sox the and Twins. the Twins, and I think the White Sox is going to walk away with it. They got better pitchers. Ah, uh, I think we pretty much agree across the board, except for the uh, AL West is a little questionable. Oh, and the. AL East. AL East. Oh, that's right, because he picked yeah, the Blue yeah, Jays. You guys are going right. Yankees. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're just taking yeah, the obvious pick, but uh, that's okay. You know, that's why we bring you on the show, so you can be wrong, and we can say nana na boo boo stick your head in doo-doo like months later. Exactly, man. <laughs> I can come on. You guys can haze me all day. <laughs> wow. All right, so hey, just to remind everybody, this was the Hawk, and he's coming to us from the weekly streamer dynasty baseball podcast. And I'll tell you what, he eloquently kind of elaborated on some of the prospects out there. That was awesome stuff. We know he's a Mets fan. Mr. Brown, you're pretty nice to him. I appreciate your uh, courtesy. Uh, the fact that he like kind of conceded the Braves are the better team. I, I'm going to take the foot off the brake. I'm sure on our off mic, he's going to tell us that the, the Mets will get the wild card and beat the Braves he's in the be playoffs, like- right? <laughs> oh, I mean, that was that was a given. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hawk, we appreciate you coming on the show, brother. I hope we can have you on uh, another time down the road, okay? Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. Well, as always, we enjoy our No Filter segment, but there's one other topic that I really want to get to, and that's the NBA All-Star Game. And we know that – the players don't really want to play the all-star game. I guess the NBA does because, Biggie, what is it? The owners want to line their pockets? Yeah, with the fans not in the seats, this is big uh, TV revenue here. <laughs> I guess. Does that mean people actually watch the game? Well, whether they watch it or not, the networks pay the league a lot of money to, to <laughs> televise it. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's one of those things where uh, all-star games have become subjective. But I'm looking around, and we were talking about all-star snubs. And the the biggest one that kind of stood out was Devin Booker, right? Well, not to me, Trey Young. So Trey Young's bigger snub. Well, third in the league in assists, top ten in scoring, and the game's in Atlanta. But so, Devin Booker's in the game. All right, so he is because AD's hurt. Right. So it's one thing to sit here and talk about who got snubbed, but who would you take off the All Star roster to put Trey Young on there? I'd take Jalen Brown off. Comparable numbers. His team hasn't done. Uh, Trey Trey Young's numbers are better. Uh, and it's not as though Jalen Brown's on a team, the Celtics, that's burning the league up. They're under 500, too. Because one of the knocks on Trey Young is they were saying, well, how can you be so bad and put up those numbers on a bad team? Celtics. Grant Hill made a lot of all star games back in the day. I'm just saying. Uh, All I'm saying is, too, and I agree with you 100%, like when when teams line up and they're playing the Hawks, they're dialing down on Trey Young. When they play Boston, they don't really know who's going to beat them. And right, I got Browns had a good year. Well, but Tatum's he, an All Star too, so. but he's not Trey Young. Yeah. Let's be real. If Boston could trade him right now, they would take Trey Young. Yeah, they probably would. Is, is uh, Boston in trouble here? Are they underachieving? Are they going to move on from Brad Stevens? Big time underachieving. Uh, the thought is that they would want to move on from Brad Stevens. He's been there eight years. They've won two eight years. He's been there eight years. It's been that long since Butler almost beat Duke in the title game. Oh yeah, we're getting old. God, how old am I? Never even been to the finals. Um, but Danny (laughs) H came out and took the blame for all the losses and said he should have a better roster built. So I think that means Brad Stevens is safe at least for the rest of this year. I mean, who else are you going to get? Like we were just talking off the mic earlier about like Doc Rivers. Who is? Uh, would you? What was your uh, eloquent way you put it? There's no one better at taking what should be great and making it good. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty. Good. That's accurate though. Good. Like that's 100 percent what Here's happens. Here's the thing: they get rid of Brad Stevens, he'll be a head coach the next day. Remember, <laughs> like Rob Ryan got fired from wherever he was defensive coordinator. I'll have a job in five minutes. Brad Stevens would really have a job. In he five is that minutes. guy. So if Doc Rivers never uh, had the success he had with the Celtics Big Three, despite the fact that it took him a minute to make it happen, would he still be in the league if not for that? I don't think so. I mean, you can't sit there and hang your hat on the Clippers' success he had. 
the only coach to ever blow two three one leads in the NBA playoffs. Nah, but we're gonna keep hiring him, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, I guess it's like his voice. It's raspy and uh Doc Rivers <laughs> always has a a huge uh opinion on everything. He does. Why has Doc Rivers become the uh virtue he's, he's signaling the voice of NBA reason. voice? Yeah. He is. Like no matter what's happening, it can be like Black History Month, let's ask Doc Rivers. Yep. It can be about you so know, like, minimum well, wage, let's ask Doc Rivers. We gotta keep the man, I gotta give him a job. We don't care what he does. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he sounds yeah. he's like the wrong voice for that you played in the nba <laughs> you were a broadcaster no coaching experience the magic hired you and you're a good coach but you're not great but you can name any job you want i don't think that you're exactly he's just mad that steve nash got that brooklyn job isn't he yeah that's what it is <laughs> which we're watching the nets right now you know, you know why uh, nash got that job right because he's a point guard because it's Canadian privilege. It is Canadian privilege. Yeah. Hashtag Canadian privilege. Exactly. <laughs> I would say uh, i love to see this this year. Zach Levine was a snub last year. He got in this year. He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, congratulations. The Bulls well, have an all-star. How much is he averaging a game? 28. He's averaging that much? He should be a fucking all-star. 28? 28. He's putting up 28, six boards, five assists. Jordan averaged 28.7 the last year he won the MVP and finals MVP in 98. Yep. And he's averaging 98, and, or sorry, 28, and he had to get in the league. Like, this is the first time. Yep. I, I saw something the other day that was talking about how many players average like 30 points a game now versus like 20 years ago. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, but everybody's getting double, uh, triple doubles like before. No, no one got triple doubles like they do now. No, well, I mean, there's so many missed threes Stat now. It's padding. easy for guards to get rebounds. <laughs> well, the game is so much less physical, too, and it's more open. So when you combine those two, you would expect to see a lot more scoring. Mm. I, I'm sorry, but, like, you look at James Harden back in the 90s. Is that man ever going to get 11 rebounds in a game? No. No. <laughs> and it happens all the time. It's because there's no bigs about, anymore. It's phony. kills me about the NBA is all these guys talk about us old heads and all the guys Jordan played against, they were plumbers, right? Who's killed the league here in the last five, six years? First ever unanimous MVP, Steph Curry, 6'3". He can't even dunk. He can shoot, and he's got handles. Anybody can do that. James Harden, chubby guy, scoring 37 a chubby game. Chubby white Luka Doncic. But everybody now is more athletic and more skilled. Hey, they might be, but the game's evolved. Like you're, you're not telling me for a second and not convincing me otherwise that if the three point, you know, game was that that impactful back in the day, that Larry Bird wouldn't have done it. that. If Larry shot fifteen threes a game, that's not the guy you want shooting fifteen I mean, threes. Look out! Don't don't condition that Dude, guy to do back, so. But back to hard, we're watching the Magic and the, and the Nets, and I literally earlier had to do a double take My because God, they're up by thirty one. They, they threw the ball to a guy, and I was like, "Why is DeAndre Jordan bringing the ball up the court?" <laughs> and it was James Harden. <laughs> it threw me off. Uh, in fact, do you think James Harden looks like DeAndre Jordan itself is hilarious? It's it just just maybe a foot taller. <laughs> I just I mean, want to say this same, on, uh, same girth. <laughs> the Larry Bird discussion. Oh, my Dirk God. Nowitzki just scored 30,000 points in the league. Bird is a much more athletic, more talented Dirk Nowitzki. I think if he played today, he'd be just as good as he was back then, if not better. I just wonder how many people listen to this thinking, like, you old bastards don't know anything. Uh, uh, like, I love it. I, I love it, too. But the fact is, we were trying to throw an NBA and snubs. And we immediately shit on the NBA. I know, yeah. right? Like we we haven't talked about the <laughs> Maybe NBA. Maybe that's why we don't talk. About we it. haven't talked about the NBA for weeks, and we're like, we'll talk about the All Star game because that's important, even though nobody and we watches. Really had, it. We really had good intentions. We did, okay, and then well, it derailed back to the All Star games. Zion Williamson made the All Star team this year. Is this one of? 10, 12, 14 all-star appearances for Zion or. I mean, maybe. I mean, it, it, as long as he, he stays, healthy. as long as he, he stays in the Pelicans, he, he's always going to put up like, good numbers because nobody else can do anything. He's shooting like 56, 50, 58% from the field. Yeah. He's super efficient. Carl Malone says he doesn't play enough minutes, but he scores 25 that, points. That is true. Like, why aren't you playing this young why, kid? Why are you tired? <laughs> 25 points, seven rebounds, three assists. I, a game. I was 12 I years older than rebounds. you, and Dennis Rodman was hitting me in a chair in WCW. Uh, the Diamond Cutter is coming yeah. out. Watch out. All right, let me ask you this real quick. Just because the Utah Jazz are the best record in the NBA now, right? They do. They're rolling people. All right. Are, are they? Do they have a successful uh, 
strategy here for long terms? I mean, I, I don't know. Like, it, if you ask Mitt Romney, they do. Well, Mitt Romney's there in the front row. He was every there game. in the front row, and he says, "How many Lake, uh, Lakers losses in a row?" <laughs> Why are we going to talk about Mitt Romney? Four, four. <laughs> I saw so, that too. So it is what it is. Oh, they have to prove themselves in the playoffs. They took a hard loss in the bubble last year when they were up three one on the Nuggets. But I do think the way they're built, they are built to, s- to succeed. I love Mitchell and Captain COVID in the middle. Yep. Captain COVID. <laughs> they got a great team. <laughs> he licked all the microphones. Let's not forget that. Yeah. He started all this. He's the reason why we're in the pandemic that bad. He's the one that makes us wear masks. Oh, screw you, Gobert. Exactly. I hope they lose. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you lose the rest of your games. Yes. Go 0-42. And, and beat the Lakers to get to the finals yes, and then lose. We'll give you that. <laughs> lose to the Nets in the finals. Uh, I just want to throw this one last thing out there because we've talked about Zion, if he stays healthy and how many minutes he plays. How many minutes does he play right now? His last five games, okay? It's like 29. 28 minutes, 31 points. I knew 34 it. minutes, 36 points. 31 minutes, 23 points. 40 minutes, 28 points. 31 minutes, 32 what points. Are they, what do they He's save? like a point a minute guy. What are they saving him for? I don't get it. I guess there's not, nobody's walking through that door. They don't want to make the playoffs. I guess. We want to get another lottery pick. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? You know, uh, and and they're, they're on the borderline, so not like you're going to get like the cream of the crop here. Right. Like you might be get a top 10 maybe if you're lucky. You got a 0.2% chance of winning the lottery. Uh, I say terrible. that uh, they're not playing him enough minutes. He is going to end up, like you said, when he first got drafted down there, he's going to look like old Booger McFarland by year four. <laughs> <laughs> about a shrimp gumbo, ride around on the crane, shrimp salad, yeah. Yeah. shrimp stew, <laughs> all that good stuff, all that oh. good shrimp. Man, we really went down a hole with the NBA. No, it is. What it is. <laughs> it is. I, I'm sorry, NBA fans. We just can't get behind it. Now, you know, come playoff time, we'll be a little bit more excited, maybe. But right now, it just kind of sucks, right? Go the Bulls. Be- <laughs> the best part of Zion is is sprint back down the court. Like he's hobbling, like he's tore his ACL. He runs like that all the time. <laughs> I'll never forget the meme we had where the uh, girls were wearing the high heels and falls down in the shoe shop when Zion blew out his shoe at Duke. That's perfect. Yeah. Oh. That's how I picture him. Uh, that's Zion to this day. Yep. It is what it is. Sorry, fellas. If you're enjoying more NBA talk than that, you're not getting it. That's all we give you because the NBA sucks right now. Sucks. I'm done talking about sports. Mr. Brown, you recommended a movie to us, Wrong Turn, and I got to admit, I didn't make it all the way through, Biggie. I know you didn't either, right? Yeah, we actually ended up in about the same spot. You're an old man. He just fell asleep earlier. I got to tell everybody the story, though. I had a mouse in my house I've been trying to hunt down for two weeks. Rodent issues. Rodent issues. That's right. I live in filth. I'm a nasty person. Peanut butter. No, actually, what happened was the, the mouse came out. I've been trying to catch this thing for two weeks, and I got a dog that's kind of a mutt. And she's about 35 pounds, dripping wet. She's a little fat bastard. And uh, I'm laying on the recliner in the living room trying to catch the mouse. And she sees it in the middle of the night. She jumps down. She she actually catches it. Like, I have a cat, too. Where's the cat at in all this? Nowhere to be found. Freaking useless. You know, I might as well euthanize her. She's terrible. <laughs> Princess, <laughs> Princess Freckles. You're no yeah. help. That was what the kids named it anyway. But uh, the dog jumps down. Scoops up the mouse and bites it in half, just like that. Mouse problem solved. Done. That's it. Yeah. But it made me miss the final third of Wrong Turn, which, you know, we're from West Virginia, so we watched Wrong Turn back in the day, and we thought it was something. But I got to tell you, Mr. Brown, I watched it, and it's in Virginia now, not West Virginia. What the hell, man? Well, the new twist shows these folks are civilized. They, they're civilized backwoods cretins. Yeah, so they're civilized. That's why the Virginia, if they were still inbred hillbillies, it would still be in West Virginia. It's messed up. I'm just telling you. Well, that's the thing that uh, when you said wrong turn, I had seen the original wrong turn, and I was thinking it was going to be like a uh, wrong turn does a crossover with the hills have eyes, and it was completely (laughs) different. There's no nuclear fallout here. Until I fell asleep. The the problem I have with with movies in general right now is – because of COVID, there's like no no good movies coming out. Like, you know, we, we have our wonderful streaming service that we all use that we're not sharing with the general public here because we're uh, above everyone else. We're, we're better than you. Just so you know that if you're listening to the podcast, we're better than you and we know it. But all these new movies, like what's been good? 
Like nothing. There's no movies. They're not shooting anymore. Like it sucks. Yeah, we're probably not going to have anything good until towards the end of the summer because they took such a long break for COVID before they started filming again. Ah, so that being said, I'm just going to close with this. I'm putting pressure on both of you guys. I've been watching WandaVision. It's almost over. I know, Mr. Brown, you're, you're a Marvel fan. You haven't watched it. Biggie, I, I don't know really how you feel about that. What? He started watching them. Have you seen any yeah. of the uh, Agatha memes here lately about the sports world and whatnot? No. I watched uh, a list of movies that Mr. Brown gave me with my son, like Captain America, Iron Man, through all those. Oh, my God. I really enjoyed yeah. those. Why, why are we in 2021 talking about you watching movies that have been out for 10 years? Because you said, where am I at on this? So I had to let you know. <laughs> but I'm, de- I'm, I'm depressed at. by your uh, your effort here. But I'm just saying, like, WandaVision, like, I, it was one of those shows I didn't really care for, didn't want to watch. But since it came out, I started watching it. My wife, who is not a Marvel movie fan, she's all about it. So I'm telling you, especially for you, Mr. Brown, the missus will enjoy it. It's a good show. It's fun. And it's still part of the MCU. It's fantastic. Just give it a chance. It's all I'm asking. Can you do that? How many uh, out of five Chad the Marks, how many do you give? I'd give it a solid four. Okay. Four out of five Chad the Marks, which, you know, my average is two. So that's <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> you're pretty, actually, you're uh, pretty hard to please. I was watching. I'm it, on, it, his rating system is pretty much like Rotten Tomatoes. It is. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like the, uh, yeah, the the typical credit uh, critic that just thinks way too highly of themselves. So I'm watching a movie that the, was the uh, second Harley Quinn movie. What was that? The... Birds of Prey or whatever. Have you seen that? No. Well, I think I it sucks. It. I don't plan on it. No, don't do yourself the, the injustice of watching it. So I'm watching it with my wife, and I do the the today. I'm doing the critical thing that you accuse me of. We're watching it, and there's this big fight scene, and I just look at her, and I go, why do all these bad guys show up and not a single one of them have a gun? But then that's why I'm bad to watch movies with. I overanalyze. Because, because we're all like Batman. I'm we don't, Batman. We don't, we don't like you. I'm not one of the hockey pads. I don't shoot guns. <laughs> no Batman. death. No if killing. Batman just killed people, it would be better. There's no hand to hand, man. It was all hand to hand. It no was guns. all hand to hand. But like, it's the mafia and they show up and like, none of them have guns. I watched the Sopranos and they have more guns than this damn so movie. The moral of the story is Chad and Mark loves a bunch of weird shit and like his, his movie, uh, synopsis is just off the charts. He's no, fr- he's crazy. I'm not crazy. No. You know what? I'm uh, sick and tired of you guys scrutinizing. My fine artistic opinion. Yeah. But either way, I'll continue to watch movies and I'll continue to shit all over them so you guys can not have to watch this garbage. But either way, we're at an hour, so we're going to wrap up. This has been the We Don't Know Sports Podcast and pop culture sucks right now because there's no movies. We talked about Happy Gilmore last week. We ain't got it this week. Somebody give us something. Recommend us something. Give us something good to watch. Maybe you can give us something back in the day because right now there's no new movies. But either way, we'll see you next week. This has been the We Don't Know Sports Podcast. 